Hello and welcome to Getting Goosebumps, the podcast where we venture into the spine-tingling worlds of R.L. Stein. My name is Stacy, And I am uh, ready for this book. Allison. Thank you very much. I'm Mickey. Why did you change for the name part? It's so weird. weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, didn't ha- I didn't have a plan. I thought of Elvis. Okay. I loved it. I would have preferred if you had said your name was Elvis and you just committed for the, the entire podcast. Thank you very no, much. No, no, but I feel like her, she, <laughs> I thought she would still say Mickey, but in the Elvis voice. See, that would be okay, too. But she didn't. Would have been should have. Yeah. 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 Too late Hindsight. Now. Hindsight's 2021. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, yes. and thank you for joining us. We are here to talk today about... The Ghost Next Door, book number 10. Are you guys ready for uh, book number 10? Oh, we uh, hit double digits. We did. Yeah. It's just, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, then yeah. we'll go ahead and uh, do the summary. <laughs> yeah. Who is going to read the summary? Mickey. I'll read it. I'll read Mickey. the summary. It's <laughs> weird to read the summary. All right. The Ghost Next Door. 12-year-old Hannah Fairchild is experiencing a boring summer at home with her parents and younger twin brothers, Bill and Herb, who are six, until a new boy moves in next door, Danny Anderson. Hannah's experiences with Danny are odd, as are her run-ins with a dark, shadowy figure that whispers her name. Danny never sees the figure, but after getting to know Danny better, she's convinced he is a ghost. Danny hangs around with two other boys from the area who continually seek trouble. They steal ice cream from a small shop and even have it out for the local postman, Mr. Chesney. The boys attempt to steal, but ultimately break, his hand-carved swan mailbox. As the days go by, Hannah is sure there is a ghost situation afoot, but the tables turn when she goes to help a fallen Danny and her hands go right through him. Danny stands and puts his hand right through her chest before running away, terrified. The realization then dawns on Hannah. She is the ghost. Five years prior, Hannah's house burned down with no survivors. She and her entire family have been dead this whole time, with even their ghosts vanishing now that Hannah remembers her tragic fate. But she remains behind, and ultimately for a very good reason. Danny's troublemaker friends coax him inside Mr. Chesney's house, where they proceed proceed to light a fire. It gets out of hand, trapping Danny inside. Hannah intends to save Danny, but is stopped by the shadow figure. It reveals that it is Danny's ghost, waiting to take his place when he dies. Hannah does rescue Danny from the flames. The shadow figure is consumed, and she carries on peacefully to the next part of her journey right into her mother's waiting arms. That's nice. That's Aww. Nice. Aww. Which is great. I think the summary is very important because as soon as I finished reading this book, I immediately forgot what it was about. Yeah. yeah and I, I, had, I will probably I had, forget it going forward. I had ghost nesia. I could not yeah. remember. It was like I had become a ghost after reading this book and everything before was lost. And I don't know why this happens. I did not feel this book was terrible by any means, but just forgettable. Yeah, it was, it was bland. We, it, I, I found myself to be enjoying it as it was happening to me, but it didn't really have anything that kept me thinking about it afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, there's two episodes of the show. Mm-hmm. I, a yeah, show that I forgot yeah. existed I kept thinking oh there's no episode I don't have to watch an episode it's fine and then I was like wait there's two episodes mm-hmm. holy cow well it's the it's it just has a lot of filler it it just it's like going to have dinner and it's mostly lettuce and like just it's not filling yeah once again notes, though I remember what happens Um, once again, though, like, as much as, like, I didn't walk away with much from this book or the TV episodes, I didn't mind experiencing them, if that makes Mm -hmm. any sense. It does. 
That's yeah, a really like, good way to put it. Yeah, like I wasn't like bored while watching the TV show. I actually was kind of enjoying it. But I, yeah, I, then you yeah. walk away and you're like, I don't need to watch that ever again. <laughs> That's fine. I feel, like they, I feel like they pumped up the episode so much because the book was so... Oh yeah, the episode know. was very different. Yeah. yeah, it was very different, but I also felt the same way about the book. Like, And uh, I I opted for a audiobook version of this book. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that, that part of my experience had to do with the person performing the book. Um, she did a really good job. So maybe that made it more a little bit more enjoyable for me to listen to than oh, yeah. it would have would have happened if I was reading it. But um I liked the way this book was written and it kept me interested. There wasn't always a lot going on, but I was I was engaged, you know? Mm. Um but again Did as talk? Oh sorry. I, I was gone. just going to say as oh. the listener can probably tell from all of our <laughs> our tones, uh, you know, it, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a room temperature cup of soup. It'll yeah. fill you up, but it's not like you're not excited to eat it. Not good. Yeah, it's <laughs> there. so bad. I'm so sorry, Papa Stein. We yeah. are being oh, oh, we have we have we have extolled the virtues of Papa Stein enough. He knows that we love him. We you know it. it this is just you know he we they can't all be winners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the cover a little bit, maybe? Yeah, yeah. even the colors it. are a little. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a look baby puke green. I was like just thinking green. they're kind of puke colored, but I didn't want to be. Uh... What and like a, a peach, gross? I guess <laughs> like a tan flesh, orangey yeah. flesh and puke green. Yeah, so yeah, the, like the pea yeah. soup and. Mm -hmm sort of flesh color <laughs> yeah the the so the like the book like uh, bracketing like the the color behind the picture that's on it is a nice shade of of old flesh puce is it puce puce maybe puce? and then oh. the goosebumps the uh raised textured title goosebumps uh, is in i mean it, to be honest it yeah it looks like peas but it also looks like like boogers it's not puce. Puce is more purpley pink. <laughs> oh, that sounds color. lovely. This is not okay. lovely. But then let's talk about the picture. Let's talk about the actual picture on the cover. There's a ghost. There's ghost feet. Good yeah, description, Stacey. Of... There's a ghost. <laughs> well, it's also standing awkwardly because it looks like the knee. All you can see are the feet on a All right. I'm going to be posy. I'm going to be posy. Ready? Well, I okay, appreciate it. that picking up this book as a child, not knowing what the story is, you would look at this and not necessarily clock that there's any meaning behind that the image on the book is from the point of view of the ghost. You are the ghost looking down at your own feet, standing on a welcome mat. And yeah. then there is a human solid foot inside the door of the house. So it's a little, it seemed, maybe it was accidental because as we know, I don't think there was a ton of communication between the illustrator and what the story was. Um, usually with these books, but it seems like it's a little bit of a hint to the fact that the main character is actually the ghost. It also looks like it's the same foot and the same shoe, because look, I mean... I mean, all kids wear Converse yeah. high tops, that's don't you know that? That's what I was going to say, is that that's the style <laughs> of the age anyway, so they might all just be, like, it legitimately might just be, but maybe the, the artist is trying to go for, like, you know, oh. you think that you're the human, but look, it's really you're the ghost. But also I noticed wow. something that just made me laugh. Uh, if you look at the door, it's opening inward to the house, right? Yeah. So if you look to the latch where the door catches, it's on the wrong side of the frame. What? Yeah, yeah it's also know. very low. It's very low. The like the metal. Piece oh, you mean that, it's outside? It's not it's outside, mm, and the yeah. the curve where like that's not where that's not how doors. All right, work. well. Doesn't look Wrap like it a up. <laughs> Let's quit now. Let's call the artist. Well, I mean, come on. If we look at the French and the Japanese covers, again, going yeah. buck wild here. I know. Oh, yeah, they have so much fun. Uh, oh, or even the Dutch. What's happening? Let me let me go down to Dutch. Oh. Dutch too. Whoa. Thanks. I love the French one. The French Next. one is excellent. Oh, yeah. 
Please describe it for our listeners. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to select French version one. It's They're all the right same though. illustration. So mm-hmm. it's a house window, um, and the curtains within the window frame have, are, are on fire and they're sort of flowing outwards out the open window and in the negative space between the curtains there is a blackness that sort of forms almost like a head shape with like a little pointy top and there are these red glowing eyes within that negative space that's a, that's a beautiful illustration that is it's yeah. like really well designed and it captures Who's... the fire, and it captures mm-hmm. the shadow figure. Exactly. Like yes, that's... and I love, Allison just posted a picture of one of the trading cards from this book. And it's oh, like, yeah. finger boobies! So, there's a boy on the ground, and there's a ghost behind him. No, don't describe what finger boobies means. <laughs> <laughs> Let them wonder. Finger boobies. This look, it. It's like, it looks like that Don't Google meme. finger boobies. It, <laughs> it looks like that old meme of, what are those? But she's doing it through his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Just made me oh god. Okay. We're talking about this book, I think. Yeah, we're stalling. But it's yeah. Fine. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's let's talk about get into it. Let's look into Hannah. Book. Hannah Fairchild is 12 years old. She has two younger brothers, as we mentioned, Bill and Herb, um, who are six. And she also has a mom and a dad. Uh, we can't not talk about the fact that there are two six-year-olds in the 90s. I don't care what decade it is. Yeah. You don't name a child Herb. Just yeah. don't do it. This is my Unless... 97-year-old six-year-old brother, er, Herb. I you, you... loved it. I want to meet them so bad. They sound so rad. Well, hang How on. The very... Wait, wait. So that kid would be, like, exactly our age now. Have you ever met anyone close to your na- age named Herb? No, no, and if I did, I would ridicule them. <laughs> No. <laughs> I would be like, what was going on with your parents? Were they would... 800 when you were born? <laughs> and is it anyway. short for Herbert? Herbert. Herbert. Okay, so... Yes, we start the book, Hannah awakens from a fiery dream. Mm. Uh, she puts on day glow shorts and a bright orange top, as you do. Apparently she's colorblind, and her what? parents make oh. fun of her. I thought you... Wait, does she literally say she's colorblind? Yeah, she's colorblind. So she picks bright colors because she can oh. see them. And like her parents pick on her, but she's like, look, I, I just, I like them. It's I fun. can see I them. I love that. You know, that's she really, <laughs> it's really like I get like the whole like, you know, good natured ribbing in a family, but also like your daughter has a disability and you're mocking her for, you know, accommodating herself. Yeah, but in the 90s, that wasn't considered a disability. No, no, they weren't a disability. So they were just your weirdo. Something to make fun of someone for. Yep. Um, uh, my fun fact kind of has ties in with the day glow. Um, so there are several references in this book, um, that, uh, when they re-released it in 2015 as a Goosebumps classic, which I think they did when the movie came out, yeah. um, mm-hmm. they edited out the, like, um, like a bunch of the nineties references. There's no yeah. day glow. There's General no Hospital. General Hospital. Um, I'm trying to think of what else the thing I read. There said. was a Game Boy. Game yeah, there's Boy. a Game Boy in it. They might have left the Game Boy in it because, or maybe well, the uh, wiki says they took it out. Oh, okay. It does say they took it out. Okay. Yeah, I read it earlier. Sorry, I didn't mean to nope. spoil your fun fact. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just glad I got it out without forgetting. <laughs> yep. But I appreciate a day glow reference. I think it's about time for day glow to come back into fashion. I love those colors. Well, get started. Get going. All right. Yeah. Start I'm a trend. Okay. If I ever leave my house, I'll follow. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to see me dressed in day glow. Yeah. <laughs> what follows is a morning breakfast scene, which I made a note that I really enjoyed this scene because I labeled it flowing chaos, where the, the, everyone's, the mom is making breakfast. The twins are in the kitchen. Hannah comes down. She has like a moment of appreciation of her family, even though they could be kind of annoying. And I don't know. It was just described in a very nice way that I enjoyed. I liked this too. And I I, I understand why you liked it, Stacy, because I know that something that I think gets on all of our nerves sometimes in these books is how, I mean, it's just like normal kids stuff, but how annoyed the kids usually are by their families. Yeah. And okay, yeah. 
irritated. And this book literally starts out with our character appreciating her family, even though it's like a chaotic situation and her little brothers are all over the place and being annoying. She she's like pleasant with them. She's not teasing them or anything. It's she nice. She hugs her mom while her mom is cooking. Yeah. It's very nice. It's I don't know. I I'm so like jaded and the like 2020 has been so rough that just that I I was I was thinking that too, Stacy. Just that little moment. I was like, oh, I want to like live in that little moment in this book. This is really lovely. Great. Let's just end it there. Thanks for yep, listening. Okay. Have a great so day. That's, nothing bad happened. They all <laughs> love each other in the end. I would give it a ten out of ten hugs. No, after this, she meets the new neighbor, Danny Anderson. Uh. Uh, confusion ensues because she's like, who are you? When did you move in? He's like, I'm Danny. They're in the same grade. They don't really know each other. There's there's a few times that happens where she's like, who are you? With? And he's like, do you know these people? And she's like, no, do you know these people? And they, they clearly don't know each other. So, But my question was, if he just moved there. How did she expect him to really know anybody? It's the middle of summer. I guess, well, I mean, time is kind of, you know, wibbly wobbly because of, you know, the ghost thing, but... Yeah, but she doesn't know that at this point. True. Maybe he wasn't meant to have moved from out of town. Maybe he well, was in town already. I have no idea. It just well, seemed odd. Well, he didn't he say he had, he'd lived here for like, he said, yeah, he lived here for a while. Yeah, he did say. Oh, he okay. For a yeah. While. So, I mean, a while for kids is probably like, you know, maybe like a, a year. I don't know. A month. Oh. A month. <laughs> I said two months, but a I while mean, could he, mean anything. But if he knows the kids, then he had to have been there for some school. Okay. Fair. Maybe. Yeah. So okay. she meets the neighbor, and then she goes back inside to write a letter to her friend Janie, who's away at summer camp. Janie promised to write every day, but so far she has not sent any letters. Uh, Hannah's really stressed about this, I think. And uh, you see her get progressively stressed about it through the book, which was kind of sad, because she was like, Janie, why aren't you writing to me? I just need yeah. to talk to you. And it was like, oh, it broke my heart a little bit. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I know we're trying to, like, get up to a positive. I'm just going to just... This book did make me sad. It made me sad really? because, because, well, because like, she's dead. She's a ghost, you know, and she's she just hasn't accepted it. And I, when she's sending that letter, she talks about, you know, oh, you know, last night I built a campfire and told stories, you know, spooky stories to my brothers. Isn't that campfire the reason that the house? Oh burned? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just like it just makes me sad because, you know, it just makes me sad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going, and then we won't. We poor won't poor Hannah. Time. Hannah goes to the post office to mail her letter, and she finds uh, Mr. Chesney, the mail guy, in an exchange with Danny and his two friends, the two other boys. Uh, they are not very nice to Mr. Chesney. Oh, there's a dog too, and it's implied dog. that Mr. Chesney threw rocks at the dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then after reading, like, and at first I was like, I don't remember that. This, that's they, He deserves whatever he gets if he was throwing rocks at a dog. But then the more the book went on and the more awful those boys are, I was like, oh, maybe he didn't really throw rocks at the dog. Because every single decision that those boys make, every single thing that they do is, like, wrong and crappy, you know? So yeah. maybe one of them just said that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe or, he was trying to throw a rock at the child, which isn't yeah, yeah maybe isn't yeah. great, but I would prefer it to the dog. Yeah, yeah maybe in their direction to get them to yeah. go away. Yeah, maybe, we don't know what they were doing to him. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. But yeah, don't throw rocks at dogs. That's not cool. Bark, bark. Yeah, that was Cosmos. He doesn't like it either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare you throw rocks at dogs? This is the first time that Hannah encounters the dark, shadowy figure whispering her name yeah this is one thing that i will say listening to an audio version of the book this was legitimately creepy in a way that i don't think would have been creepy at all when i read the book um yeah hearing because the the voice actress every time that she whispered 
it was it was it was legitimately creepy it like because oh. there's one thing to read on the page you know the dark shadowy figure whispered hannah hannah but then there's getting out it's oh dang here we are, you're hold on let me try to get real close to the microphone oh god right. okay ready no did you nothing. hear that no. dang it <laughs> breathe out harder <laughs> That's not scary. It sounds, it sounds like you're drowning. It sounds like <laughs> just everybody take a moment to yourselves to just whisper Hannah very softly and drawn out, and uh, it's spooky. Yeah. It's quite Name. spooky. It's yeah. It sounds. Yeah. So that's that's a positive. There's so many small things. Like the next thing that happens is uh, Danny's tossing a ball around that ends up on the roof, and he goes up to fetch it. And then seems to fall, but is actually okay. And so this is one of the instances that leads Hannah to think he's a ghost. But it's, like, irrelevant. And it was like, it's why do we have this? And is never paid off. Like, we don't find out how he... She's really bugged out by the fact that he, like, should have fallen on his head, but somehow landed on his feet. And it's never really explained why he just says, oh, I'm an acrobat. Uh... I, I don't know. There, I feel like there should have been some kind of payoff later. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what kind there could have been, but it's like, why even put that in there? I don't know. Exactly. And then immediately after uh, she goes over to the house and is like looking in the kitchen, the back door, the kitchen door, and he sees her looking through the door. And then she's like spooked and runs away because um, he, ca he caught her snooping. It was like, yeah. why? Why do we have this? Why did I have to make a note for this? <laughs> yeah. There's just, there's a lot of um, attempts to make creepy what is, you know, uh, I don't know how to word it. No, me either. Like, these are just normal things that she made awkward for some yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, she follows him into town on, on bikes, but she loses him and sees the dark shadow again. Uh, this time it actually comes at her and knocks her down. Uh, but Danny finds her and, and helps her up. Uh, the shadow whispered her name, but Danny never saw it. He only saw her fall. So I, I think that also at this point, she's starting to question like her own sanity. Like, is he a ghost? What is this? Am I going crazy? Yeah. Why does yeah. nobody else see these things? But it was just yeah. another thing that it was like, okay, this happened, but did it need to happen? Yeah. 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 Especially, it's a, it was a lot harder, um, or a lot, I remember that the last time that we read this, I did not, I had never read this book, and at the very, very beginning, I didn't know what the twist was, um, but being fully aware, <laughs> it was a little hard to get through all these little uh, mm -hmm. fake out, Hannah is scared about the situation, and I'm like, all right, let's just get to the part where she finds out she's a ghost. Yeah. She's a ghost. She, she writes another desperate letter to Janie. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Here she falls asleep outside and dreams that Danny tries to take the letter, uh, but the twins wake her up. And again, that was another thing that happened. We were like, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So then she goes to knock on Danny's door to invite him for ice cream. Uh, but she sees his mom sitting there at the table with her back to the door. So she's knocking and she's calling to her, but the mom never turns around. And she thinks this is super weird, which, yeah, if I were a kid doing that, I'd probably think it was super weird too. She later learns that Danny's mom is deaf and that's why yeah. she never turned around. And I just thought that was super interesting, not only for a mechanic of the story, but just to have a deaf character in the book in general. Yeah. Like monster blood. Yeah. Oh yeah. So now we've had two. We've had two deaf characters, but also we've had in the books, in the written versions, we've had zero uh, deaf characters who actually speak sign language. Like his his mom just in the book, it's sort of explained. I, I mean, I don't know if she explicitly doesn't use sign language, but in the book, he explains that his mom is embarrassed about being deaf and uh, just reads his lips and... I don't, I don't know. It, it felt kind of weird to me. <laughs> like, it felt yeah. like a weird choice. And the TV show, um, you see Danny and his mom communicating together, and they use sign language. So I thought that was cool. Um, 
maybe Papa Stein just wasn't sure how to describe sign language. Maybe, but yeah. He didn't he probably doesn't speak it, so yeah. They don't, they don't interact with the mom. Yeah, that's true. That's in true. the book. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, I appreciated it in the TV show that they yeah that was spoke cool with sign language yeah mm-hmm. yeah and she did read his lips a few times as well yeah too. yep yeah which is how it is in real life usually someone who mm-hmm. can't hear will do a combo of sign language and lip reading he dismissed her a lot though mm. and which I think would have been super frustrating he because he can easily just be like it's nothing mom whatever yeah yeah, yeah. I would be so mad if if someone did that to me constantly. Totally. But yeah. So Hannah goes to the ice cream shop on her own anyway, where she sees Danny and his friends stealing ice cream. Troublemakers. They run out of the shop not having paid, and the Mr. Harder, the ice cream man, runs out and knocks Hannah down, but doesn't seem to notice. So she's a little upset and offended. But she follows them and finds them. Well, I don't know if she follows them, but she encounters them again. And they are at Mr. Chesney's house attempting to pull up his hand-carved swan mailbox, and I am so offended. <laughs> that yeah, I like, know. as a child, I remember reading this, and I remember being like, oh, stupid mailbox, they should tear it up, or whatever. Like, maybe not, you know, agreeing with... Jeez. Like, well, no, maybe not agreeing <laughs> with, like, mailboxes. destruction. More just like, oh, he's a mean adult, and he deserves right. this. But as an adult, I'm like, oh, God, like, I... Like I get ang- I get anxious when I see people walking by my yard, let alone <laughs> judging <laughs> judging my mailbox. Like just but yeah, hand carved. Just why is it always the mailboxes? Because they're right there on there. the street. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to actually go like on the property yeah. kind of. Yeah. And also, uh, I just have to say as the daughter of a retired USPS uh delivery person, um I don't think that a mailman who took his job quite seriously would have such a flamboyant mailbox. There are certain protocols you need to stick with. Uh, And also, furthermore, something that a lot of people don't know is that you don't own your mailbox. You might buy your mailbox, you might set it up, but it is not yours. It is, uh, it's, it, it like belongs to the government, basically. Interesting. Do yeah, you, I thought it was the inside. Oh, maybe it's just the inside. That might be the technical, like where it's at. Yeah, I think. This but yeah, so kids like... out there, don't go smashing mailboxes because <laughs> you could get in like a lot of trouble for that. Like yeah. it could be like if it, it could be considered like a federal I was situation. Say, it's a federal level situation. That's right. I'm a federal employee. It's... But before Hannah can interrupt them, the shadow figure attacks her. And then Mr. Chesney runs out and catches the boys. And this is kind of when Danny breaks the swan and they run away. Uh, But Hannah intercepts Danny and questions why he's hanging out with these kids. Like, what are you doing? This is also the moment where he admits that his mom is deaf because she explained she went to his house to ask him for ice cream. And I think we see a little bit that Danny hangs out with these kids to to be cool, like peer pressure type of yeah. thing. I don't think Danny's actually a bad kid, per se. They're kind of egging him on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he even really likes them. He just, he found a group and he wants to fit in. Uh, and then we have another interaction with the shadow figure that's waiting for her. And this is when it tells her to stay away from Danny. So it's kind of a scary incident, but the figure is gone when her dad appears. And it's just like, I feel like the shadow figure, if it hadn't done anything, it would have been, I I feel that it would have been creepier, but also probably would have had better luck. I feel like the shadow figure is what essentially caused Hannah to save the day, essentially. (laughs) Like, it it pushed her towards this by, by being a spook. Yeah, is the okay? I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, is the shadow figure just Danny's ghost the whole time? It's supposed to be. Okay, so why? Yeah, exactly what you said. Why is it even bothering with her? Yeah, like why is I'm it following not... her around and calling her name? I don't. Well, maybe know. it foresees that she like is going. Yeah, to maybe. Alter the course. Yeah, it it knows that she is there to protect him. 
mm. maybe. Yes. Um, because like, I, one thing that I thought when I was reading even the, this book, even the first time, and I and you know I I'm pretty I'm pretty smart, so I figured out before <laughs> the book revealed that she was a ghost. Mm-hmm. But I thought that the shadowy figure was just like death itself coming to get her, oh. or like beckoning her to the afterlife. I just don't know why Danny's ghost, quote unquote, is um bothering with her. Like it's, just ignore her. Yeah. <laughs> she that it's, night she literally has a dream that Danny is the shadow. She's like onto it. <laughs> she's like starting. Yeah. To- I don't know. Even subconsciously, she's starting to understand. But that leads to the next day where she literally just asks him, I guess she's fed up with everything. Are you a ghost? And of course he's not. He is playing ball and falls down and Hannah tries to help him up, but her hands go right through him. Um, So he stands up and he touches her back and his hand goes right through her chest. And this, of course, freaks him out. So he runs away, super scared. And we have that pivotal moment of Hannah realizing that she is a ghost. It's yeah. like her memory comes crashing back down and everything changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is pretty horror. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Description. Uh, because she just all of a sudden her entire world is gone. She Her family's gone. Her house is in shambles, right? Like it doesn't, it's not normal anymore. Or no, it's been, uh, anymore? it was rebuilt because she encounters a neighbor okay. like almost right, almost immediately. And the neighbor is telling another new neighbor the story that the right. it was a fire and it, the house has been empty since it was rebuilt. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, which was five years prior. Hannah and the twins had a campfire out back that they didn't put out entirely, catching the garage on fire. And then it spread to the house. Uh, which is what Allison mentioned she was actually describing in her letter at the beginning. Yeah, it just makes me sad. She was just trying to have a you know fun night out with her little brothers and uh not to be victim blaming here, mm-hmm. but perhaps you shouldn't let twelve year olds be in charge of putting out a campfire. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. As far as her parents go. Maybe go yeah. out and double check and make sure she really put it out. Yeah, this is a PSA for anybody listening. If you have children or are a child or have yeah. ever had a campfire, please make sure that an adult checks it and make sure it's out. Because yeah. embers, man, embers. Still you don't want to be like Anna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, her entire family is gone now um, because... I, I feel like these weren't necessarily their ghosts that were there. I feel like it was a manifestation her memories. of her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I so think so too. She knows they're not there anymore, so she's very much alone. And it's, Danny's scared of her, so... Coming to terms, uh, it's it's. I feel like this is magnified in the episode, but the book a little bit now is her coming to terms with her being dead and, you know, finding out, you know, what what's her purpose now like why is she why hasn't she you know quote unquote moved on Mm -hmm. yeah yeah she starts to get a feeling that something is very wrong something bad is going to happen uh, specifically to danny i mean especially since especially since the shadow keeps going stay away from danny right he keeps keeping her off like she probably wouldn't have had a clue if you hadn't been like, stay away from Danny. Do not worry about doing anything. Do anything. So, okay, well, you're making me have questions I wouldn't have had before. The boys return to Chesney's house to actually take his mailbox this time. But they sneak inside and set a fire instead. Alan and Fred. Oh, yeah, the boys are named Alan and Fred. <laughs> Alan and yeah, Fred. We didn't mention that. <laughs> no. They escape, but Danny is still trapped inside. So Hannah realizes now's my time i have to go in and save him but the shadow figure tries to keep her away and finally it reveals that it is danny's ghost waiting to take danny's place when he dies so of course he needs danny to die so he could take his place i don't which doesn't does anyone know what that means i don't understand dude why are you telling this to hannah like what like what's it gonna do i don't i don't even know what it means though what does it mean what does that mean i'm his ghost I don't know. I don't know. What does that mean? Is this like take his place? How? Is this like let's get invisible where there's like the mirror world? That's what it sounded like. like. This is just like the spirit world and they're all like our reflections, but instead of reflections, there are spirits. Why doesn't Hannah have one? I don't know. Hannah is one? I don't know. Like 
this is where it got a little too like again it's like it's like if i were walking down the street and somebody was like standing next to a box i wouldn't give it a second glance but if i was walking by and somebody was like hey hey don't look at that box don't look hey, don't, don't you look in that box don't you look that's not for you you can't look in it i'd be like what the fuck is in that box but like like this ghost is just making it harder for or this the spirit is making it harder on itself because it's essentially saying don't touch the wet paint it's wet because like well now i want to see if it's wet i want to touch it like <laughs> i don't know i just it's yeah. just not a smart spirit is it bored like it's weird like, I don't, I don't know. know. Exactly. I yeah. just don't understand the logistics of no. what yeah. what a ghost is in this book and what is the what is Danny's ghost's plan to <laughs> Danny so what happens to Danny when Danny dies? Wait, does he so not have a spirit in him? I don't know. Is, they swap places and also does the spirit They swap places? Is that the goal? Does the ghost get his body? Because his body's going to be all burned up. Yeah. That, well, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> his body's going to be all broken. That, point. that was the case. Then why didn't Hannah's ghost take her body from the fire? Maybe it did. Maybe she's family. running around somewhere. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the whole family moved. They're like, okay, we're going to get <gasps> out of here. Maybe this is how you make a ghoul. Uh no, it's not. No, it's I, not. I was humoring you. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't matter because Hannah saves Danny. Yeah, yeah of course. Him, the shadow is consumed and she can no longer be seen. Uh, but she saved the day and her mom calls her back. Says you done you done good, kid. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, very happy ending. And, yeah, it is a happy ending compared to some of the other books. Yeah. Yeah. Compared yeah. to a lot of the other books. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's kind of ultimately a sad ending, but it's a sad. It's there's a sad story in there, but it's a happy ending. You know, it all worked out. I mean, it's a happy ending in that she's reunited. I think with you yeah, know, are these actually her family, <laughs> or is it more of her like ghost mind delusion? I'm just gonna. It's it's her family. They're gonna live. Yeah, in her- yeah I think it's her actual ghost. Ghost family. America, like you know. Yeah, I read it as. She, her mom was calling her to heaven and okay. the end. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I think that's nice. Okay. I can, I can believe some sort of, you know, ethereal, uh, happy afterlife. I can, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's like a little bit of a, of a brighter greed fall. Was it greed fall? Is the name of the town? Uh-huh. Oh, I, it was, um, something falls. Greed falls. I think it was no. from the show. Green? Greenwood Falls. Greenwood Falls. Okay. Okay. Uh, So the episode was uh, quite different. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It was wildly different. I think, so I had said about the book, like, you know, this, there are moments in this book where, or like one or two moments where it feels like uh, we're focused on Hannah's journey to realize that she's a ghost and what her purpose is as a ghost or whatever, and to move on, you know, all that stuff. But so that's what the entire two episodes is about, is Hannah's journey to realize that she's a no, ghost. No, she finds out she's a ghost at the end of the first episode. Yeah, yeah. But, the, but the beginning of that episode, remember, she doesn't have her family there. She's alone. She yeah. keeps seeing, like, there's, you know, a time is, like, different, the... Um, the pizza person, the pizza delivery guy doesn't see her at Danny's house. The the kids hanging out with Danny don't see her. Like, it's clear that she's a ghost kind of to the audience. But to, like, her... Oh, I don't think... I don't think it's that no, over. when she calls 911, it's, she just thinks there's something wrong with the phone. Yeah, there's so. like a somewhat explainable... And the pizza guy, she just brushes past him. She, she can use the internet. She yeah, can use the internet. And Ghosts can, can use print. the internet. She can print, yeah. yeah. But like, it's I don't know. She's just... We just talked about how difficult it can be to print things. We were yeah. talking about that. Printers, man. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. No, I was thinking because I um I have a I have um I have the second episode up where she I'm looking at the screenshot of um it's a scene where she uh after so she she it's the whole first episode is just her like meeting Danny and having continuing like you're a ghost you're a ghost 
even though no one's talking to her and she can't talk to anybody and her family's missing and like all these things and she hasn't eaten or changed her clothes or anything. But you think that's more egregious than in the book? The book, it goes on for like three quarters of the book, at least. I mean, but anyway. <laughs> so No, I'm I mean, just saying, like, I, think, then... I, I think that's one improvement from the book to the TV show. It could have been all crammed into one instead of two episodes. But I was glad that they at least got her realizing she's a ghost out of the way halfway through the story. Yeah, then we no, might no. not have had the whole sequence of her learning how to do ghosts things <laughs> oh yes that's the best part no i i like that that's fine but okay. I, i'm just saying like the whole like uh, the whole episode was devoted to her finding out she's a ghost rather than like i don't know i i'm it's hard for me to explain because she's just like a normal girl in the in the book for most of the book she's a normal girl she's got a normal family you know she is weirded out by the kid next door and then the twist is that oh it was her she was a ghost all along but in the episode it's shot to me i mean okay i did go in with prior knowledge but to me the episode shot in a way that's like all right so here's this girl something's definitely off and uh so here we're gonna show her realizing she's a ghost I um i didn't really get the uh impression throughout the episode like i think there were more clues that she was a ghost but i don't think that uh, I don't think it was meant to be obvious to a viewer until mm-hmm. you know a certain amount through the episode. As yeah. like, even though her family wasn't there, there were like differences like that. Um, like you said, she's not eating any meals or anything. Presumably, she's not eating any meals in the book either. Oh True. wait, she was. There was breakfast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but I don't know. Anyway. It's just, uh, it's, yeah. Can I talk it's, about uh, her fashion a little bit? I would love a fashion report. <laughs> yes. it's been the too only long. fashion report I have is, okay, so we talked about the day glow in the book. The The TV show came which I really appreciate. I remember this time period very fondly. Uh, the first thing I notice and appreciate is that very beginning of the episode, she's fully dressed. Maybe she just fell asleep, took a nap. But I don't know why that stood out to me so much, but I was like, that is very 1998. Yeah. The story is a little different. She finds out she's a ghost halfway through, so at the end of the first episode, beginning of the second. Yeah, he he goes from being a bad spirit to being like, let's have some episodes all burned up, and she's like, I'm a ghost. I'm all alone. I don't have anybody. And then there was a spirit say, I'll always be here for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Spirit. It's the menacing spirit who's been following her. And oh, what he's like! I need to speak to you. I didn't want to scare you. And it's like, well, dude, why are you <laughs> creeping around whispering my name? Hana, Hana. <laughs> like, why didn't you? Like, you, it, he just does not have good social skills. If he becomes Danny, then people are going to know right away something's wrong. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. good. oh, but she saves him by playing the piano instead of getting him out of the fire. Oh, yeah. She can't lift him, so she plays the piano in the house. And they're like, what is that? There's mm-hmm. someone in there. Uh, the mailman was much more likable in the TV show. Yep. Yeah. He had a... What was his cat's name? Beauregard. 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 That's a great name for a cat, mm-hmm. man. Oh. He has a cat. He's a cat lover. Mm-hmm. He's got a piano in his house. Mm-hmm. Did he have on fun little pajamas while he was at home? I think so. Have I missed remembering that? A yeah. I think, I think he did. Yeah. I mean, is there anything else to say about the TV episode? It ultimately I has mean, the same sort of ending. She saves it. I have him. a note that says OMG Danny Ghost Face. Because oh, it was oh. awful. When they showed yeah. when he was like, I'm Danny's ghost. Oh, and then he yeah. showed like a weird warped version of Danny's face and it's like orange and it was like, ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember one other thing I wanted to say about the episode. Um, the beginning scene, um, Allison, I know you're not as into horror movies, but mm-hmm. uh, did you guys get any vibes when she's walking around her house on the phone trying to call 911? Uh, scream? And, yes, it was very, very scream like. Now, in Scream, obviously, Drew Barrymore is not on the phone with the police. She's talking to the killer. But it was 
very simple. She was like frantic and walking around and locking doors and looking out the windows. I was like, you straight up are doing Scream with a child right now. <laughs> like you're doing that scene from Scream. Um, and I, I looked it up and this episode did come out two years after Scream came out. So I think that the, did I think, really? yes, wow. I think it was intentional because oh. the book came out in 93, but this episode didn't come out till 98. Okay. I got and some Scream... X-Files vibes from it. Oh, it okay. The 90s effects. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that was the only scene that was kind of Scream-like, though. But I, I, I appreciated it. Yeah, because that scene didn't even happen in the book. So nope, nope, yeah. And the ca- I think it was also that the camera was following her from room to room. It was like a tracking shot. Yeah, which was very like that scene in Scream. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. In the book, Mr. Chesney is depicted as cruel, child hating man. Um, but in the episode. He- He's nice. He's he's calm, and he even he is. he is very friendly. He even ends up saving Danny in the end. Well, I guess Hannah really saved Danny, but you know, Mr. Chesney yeah. ran. But Mr. In Chesney and ran into a, a house on fire, which is pretty impressive. That is, he's the real hero. <laughs> yeah, like it's just this this book isn't like amazing, and it's really there's a lot going on in the country right now, so I'm a little distracted. But uh, it, it's not a bad book. It's really not. Don't Should let our it, yeah and yeah don't let's don't read it. Don't let our uh, unexcitement uh, keep you from enjoying it. But <laughs> I'm not going first this time. You guys have to go first. I'll go first. Okay. I would rate this book. Um, you know, I and again, I'm coming from a place of having listened to the audio book, and I very much enjoyed that that Mm -hmm. performance um the actress did very good child voices she sounded a lot like the actress who um i can't remember her name right now but she's in like every animated show she does uh phil and lil's voices on rugrats Mm -hmm. you know who i'm talking about oh this actress sounded a lot like that when she was doing like hannah's brothers which was very cute um but i would give this book a I'm going to give it 3.75 out of 5 uh, neglected campfires. That's quite high and also quite depressing. Why would you choose neglected Yeah, that's... I don't know. That was the first thing I thought of. Wow. Well, I mean... Okay, yeah. just camp- Let's say campfire. Okay, campfires. Oh, you, you did... No, I mean, it's the okay, same. All right, all right. I'm not... I'm not okay, I'm leaving, right, yeah, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. Leave it okay. in. Leave it in. <laughs> Okay. Leave it in. I can do mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is going to be two out of five Bill and Herbs. <laughs> I was going to do Bill and Herbs. Five. Wait, oh, five God, Bill and Herbs? How two, would there be five? Two out of five. No, I know, but it's two oh. out of five Bill and Herbs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so a combination, it, Bill and Herbs. It would be like 0. 0.5 out of two million <laughs> herbs. There we two go. There, just no, there... two, two out of five, not 2.5. Sorry. Two, oh, out okay. five. two out of five. Got it. Because I mean, they herbs. were the best part of the book for me. And yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree with you guys that the book isn't bad. I just wasn't into it. And I forget it very easily. And, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's um, where I'm going to be. I, I say I'm waffling between a two or a three. So I'm going to also do uh, a, a decimal. I'm going to do 2.5. So 2.5 out of five uh, hand carved swan mailboxes. That's nice. That's that was another one. highlight of the book for me. Yeah. The mailbox. And, and, the mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I wow, that I... is not a good book if that's the highlight of the book. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool it. mailbox. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Not... I really didn't dislike the book. Sure. I didn't have any. Mailbox. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't have any any issues with it. There weren't any parts that were like, you know what really makes me upset is when the ghost had a face and the face wasn't, you know, like, no, I, it, it just. I don't know, just didn't hold my attention. It was it was an okay read, and it's just yeah. I have a lot of stuff going on right now, so I'll be a little. I won't be as as rough as I could. But yeah, I mean that's all I've really got to say. Uh, well, I'm curious, um, which did you guys like more, the episodes or the book? The book. 
Yeah, I think I liked the book more too. Hannah in the show was weird. I think yeah. the actress. I the well, I couldn't decide if I liked her or I didn't like her, you know? Yeah. I had yeah. yeah. I did like the I liked the wardrobe. I liked her second outfit that she wore. Mm. It was so very she much did change her clothes. You she did. She? After <laughs> she found out she was a ghost. No, before. It was before she found out she was a ghost. It was that like the day that on. She, Yeah. The first day she had like a little sweater on and khaki pants and her clear belt. And then uh, the next day she had on oh, yeah. baggy pants, a tight white undershirt and a like open button up like a boy's uh like plaid t-shirt. All right, well, I got to I got to upgrade my score from a 2.5 to a 5 now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I miss that. I probably was probably wasn't just paying enough attention, but um, no, I I just pay attention to the weirdest, most unnecessary things. No, like the good, second though. outfit that the girl wore on the episode. <laughs> Listen, so in the movie, she's that's one of the main characters in the movie. Really, she's the daughter, Hannah. I, I oh mean, my god, it's the same name. I don't know if it's meant to be exactly the same character, but oh well, wait, you're not talking about the actress though. No, the character in the movie. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, interesting. I have not seen the movie. I guess there's two of them now, but I really Ooh, we should I, watch them and talk. I feel about like them. we should watch it. Yeah, we, we should really do like should. a, um, like a. I don't know if we can live live blog while we're watching. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But, but you know what we're gonna do next, right? Not goosebumps. Not goosebumps. We for our next episode are going to discuss the very first Fear Street book. It was released in 1989, and it is called The New Girl. Oh, not I'm yet. very excited to read this. For anyone yes. not familiar with the Fear Street books, they are also by Papa Stein, but they are, they are for a, an older audience. Instead of like 11 and 12 year olds, they're for like 14 and 15 and 16 year olds. Yeah. Like, so, you know, a teenagers. Yeah, it's going to be a little more sophisticated around a here. A little more uh, risque. Uh, I don't think so. No, no I started. It's not. Book. It's I, not. It's, it's it's not. <laughs> I mean, we've had children with melting eyeballs in these books, so I mean, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right? pretty cool. Yeah, that's but we're going to be dealing with things like dating, ooh, and high school, and uh, driving. I don't know. Do they drive in those books? No, I don't know. they're gymnasts. Oh right! <laughs> they, they, do they drive? No, no, they're, they're gymnasts. gymnasts. <laughs> they just flip around they everywhere. Flip around everywhere. <laughs> oh god! I just picture a horde of teenagers flipping down the street, and it's horrifying. Just back handsprings all the way down the oh, road. God, it's the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Ugh. But the book, will be, the, the book will be fun. <laughs> All right. Yes. In the meantime, you can check us out on social media. We are at Goosebumps Pod, Twitter, and Instagram. There's a Facebook. I don't update it because it's Facebook. So <laughs> yeah, we're um, not we're not yeah, old. Fine. Sorry, give us a shout. Facebook. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Stay spooky. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.